We have the director of the play After the Blast, which will be uh, presented at Ripping College October 14th through the 17th, next Thursday through next Sunday. Uh, Bob Amstens joins us. Robert. Robert or Bob? What do you go by? Bob. Okay. Yeah, me too. But uh, Bob's a former college professor there? Or are you emeritus? Now? Yes. Uh, no, I'm emeritus. Okay. I, I retired formally in 2018, but uh, the arrangement was that I could come back and uh, direct a show once a year. And usually, so far, it's been in the fall. And so this is my, this is my fall uh, work gig for the college. Now, this one is a little bit different because it's kind of a an after-the-nuclear blast type of drama or play. Tell us a little bit about it, if you would, please. Sure. This, um, uh, well, I was a little bit amused when um, Bob introduced this as some entertainment, and I thought, wow, well, it's not going to be singing and dancing. However, <laughs> <laughs> the story of the play uh, is, is a domestic story. It's about a husband and wife. And they're uh, working toward having a child. And the playwright um, has wisely, you know, built in some domestic squabbles. There are things in the play that are just genuinely funny about, you know, what happens between an intimate, intimate couple. Um, the premise of the circumstances um, in the theater, we call them the given circumstances, um, is that there has been an, 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 a nuclear disaster and there's no description of what exactly happened, whether it was a, a, a reactor meltdown or there was nuclear war. But that information, in fact, is not important to the story of the play. Um, people uh, who were prepared were able to move underground. And so um, the two main characters, uh, Anna and uh, Oliver, uh, live underground <clears throat> Time-wise, it's about the third generation in, in the information that you get from the play. People have been living underground, I think, approximately about 60 years. They've created a whole culture, a whole society. Um, the circumstances of Anna and Oliver seem remarkably middle class to us. He goes off to work every day. He's a scientist, and um, she has been uh, a journalist. So one of the uh, ways I describe the play is even though it's in the future, it really doesn't seem that far in the future. And these people seem a lot like us. The technology is not all that different than the technology we have. And the issues that come up in the play, even though it's science fiction, I suppose, it looks a lot like the issues that we deal with right now in um, 2021. All right, I have to ask you this because um, you have a robot in the play. How do you create right. a robot for theater like that? Well, um, you know, we the theater. Uh, we're, I don't. I don't want to say it works on illusion, but um, when you have a robot on stage, it it doesn't have to be a completely functioning talking robot in the way that that you would think in reality so uh we have put together a couple of different forms of technology uh to create the robot and it really it's items that are completely available today and in some ways i don't know how much i want to reveal about how we put the robot together because I want you to come and be amazed and go, oh my gosh, how did they build that robot? It does everything. But in fact, it's doing some things, but you know, it's sort of pieced together. Is that a good enough answer for you <laughs> sure. now? So I want, you know, I want people to come to see the robot. I don't want to tell you how it works now. But, well, I didn't just mention that because it's also part of the plot, right? Right. The story, the, the issue is, um, um, you know, now in our world, um, the notion of uh, medical consultation um, via artificial intelligence is uh, a possible and probably functioning in some cases. Uh, when you, um, well, uh, you know, you're an old person like me, you call the Social Security Administration, the artificial intelligence that answers the phone um, is, is remarkably pleasant and efficient. So the technology... Um, 
exists now. Oliver procures the robot to help with this domestic problem that, that they're having. Um, Anna has, has suffers from some depression, and so the robot becomes um, a companion for her, talks to her, and the robot and the human have some pretty interesting conversations. <laughs> <laughs> you can imagine. <laughs> All right, so uh, how big a cast are we talking here? Oh boy, that should be an easy, um, an easy question to answer. Um, there's somewhere between seven and nine. Okay. Uh, the reason that I say that is that uh, for this play, we have a couple of pre-recorded um, segments uh, that we use, um, and so I, I guess the people on stage that you see would be seven. Okay. Um, the other thing is. This is an opportunity to reopen the Ripon College Theater, right? Yes, thank you uh, for asking that question. Um, we're pretty excited about being able to invite the public back into the theater. Um, we will, you know, you, of course you will have to be masked, and we will probably institute some level of social distancing. I've gone to the theater a few times um, this fall, and, you know, it really isn't much. You leave a chair between you and the person who's not in your party. Um, and so uh, the hardship is really not very great. We can, you know, construct an audience with, uh, with the restrictions that we're um, under now. And I don't know if I would say in honor of reopening, but with the notion of reopening, uh, we're going to have a, a post-curtain, post-show uh, response session uh, from the audience. the 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 theater, the theater, the live theater is about community. And I know, in our you know, for the past I don't know fifty years or so, especially with the advent of movies, the notion of this community aspect of theater is is not as strong as it has been in let's say centuries past. But in fact, it is a communal event. And um, we thought with the topics that are that come up in the show, as I said, they they relate to us now. I thought I would give the audience a chance to respond to what they saw in the play. Um, this is not about you know critiquing the actors or anything like that. Is that did this resonate with you? Um, did 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 you ag- agree with this? Did you see this? Uh, pr- maybe political or social policy in the play? Is it something that you disliked? Is it something that you believe is going to happen? And and I'm not anticipating that all of the conversation will be about whether we will have a nuclear war or not. That's actually probably the least interesting part of it. It's the social mores that are represented in the play that I think will cause people to think about their lives now and maybe have some response about it. All right. Um, how do you like how do you like your cast? Oh, they're dreams. <laughs> oh, I you know I'm I'm so I'm so lucky. Um, the young woman who's playing the lead, um, I, I, I guess I she's a senior, and I guess I I feel like I've watched her develop over the four years into um, being able to take on this large and powerful powerful role and i'm so proud of her and uh, i have a, a young man who is amazingly enough uh, a first year student but at ripon college this can happen you come to ripon as a first year student you in fact can get a lead in a play uh and he's uh, he happens to be from california but he's uh, he's been a dream to work with and so and the, and the other characters as well some of them some of them are people new to me and some of them are actors that i've worked with before so it's in a theater department like this, it begins to feel a little bit like an acting company because it's a, it's a, a, a small group of people. And, and that's in the theater. That's a wonderful set of circumstances. All right. So the times are seven thirty PM for the Thursday through Saturday performances. And then you have about two o'clock matinee on Sunday. Correct. And, and the audience response sessions will be after the Thursday, Friday, and Sunday evening, uh, Sunday performances, not on Saturday because we have something else going on 
on that Saturday. And I put in the program, I guarantee the response session will not last more than 25 minutes. I'll pull the plug at 25 minutes. It won't go on past that. All right. Tickets are free, but reservations are recommended? Correct. Okay. Um, you can call uh, 920-748-8791. To make uh, reservations, um, and there is also a um, email uh, that you can email a reservation in. This information would be on the college's website. So I, you know, who's going to remember a phone number when I hear this on the radio? I never remember it. So, but you can go to the college website, and it will direct you as to how to make a reservation. And again, there's no charge. The reservations are not necessary, but recommended. Well, Bob, we have to wrap up. Anything else that you'd like uh, people to know about after the blast? Well, um, the uh, after the New York uh, performance, the, the play premiered in 2017, um, sharp, stirring, incisive, and humane, and an intriguing, engaging, laugh-laced drama with heart. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. <laughs> Bob, thank you for joining us this morning. Appreciate your time. Thank you for having me. Bob Amston, the director of After the Blast, coming up at Ripping College next week.